So here's what we're going to do in this particular lab view tutorial. I'm going to show you how to plot a sine wave into a waveform graph, and then we're going to adapt that very easily, illustrating the power of lab view, into something that reads a voltage actually from the lab jack device. So let's just get started then. First thing I'll need here is I'm going to go into my block diagram here, which I, where I do my programming. I'm going to pull down a while loop in here. I'm going to look under structures and go to while loop right here, because it's the type of program I want to continually sample from the sine wave and or the lab jack to keep it running. There's my while loop structure right there. The condition down here with a little stop sign is when the while loop should actually stop. And so I'm going to right click on that. And I'm just going to create a control for that. And if I look very carefully at the, what it's done now, it's a create a button over here in the front panel, which I'll be able to click to stop the program. But more importantly, if you look at the condition of the stop, if I right click on it once again, you can see that it's currently checked off as being stop if true. This means if the button is pressed, the while loop will exit, and so will the program. So anyway, we'll continue on then. What I'll do now is let me get my sine wave um, calculator out here. So I'll go look under mathematics right here, and it's under elementary and special functions. I have to look under trigonometric, trigonometric functions in here. I see sine right here. Now, your lab, you might be a tad bit different. This is version 7.0, but one way or the other, if you hunt around in your palette, you should be able to find the block that calculates the sine wave for you. Now, let me, let me illustrate something else very useful about LabVIEW. If I go up here and pull down the Help menu, and I highlight this thing, called Show Context Help. What will happen is another window will pop up here that will always give me real-time help on the item I have the cursor over. So if I hold the cursor over this sine wave function right here, you can look up in the Context Help menu, and it clearly shows that if you pass a value X in, this particular icon will take the sine of X and then pass it back out. So I'll sort of leave that open so we can always, always sort of tell what wiring uh, scheme I might need for a given icon. So there's my sine function. Now, to determine what x value I want to take the sine of, I'm going to look down here for this loop iterator called i right here. And this is just the index of the while loop. Starts at 0, then goes to 1, and then goes to, to 2, and just keeps counting up as the while loop iterates. I'll just wire that right into my sine function just like that. So I'll take the sine of the loop iterator. Of course, this will take the sine, and then this output wire right here, you can see it flashing up there in the context help, is actually the sine of x, or in this case, the sine of the loop iterator. That's exactly what I want to pass into my graph. So I'll go over here back to the front panel, and I'll right-click again here, and I see a different set of controls, but here's the graph right here. So I pick on, pick up waveform chart and sort of grab that in. That'll give me a nice big graph that I can plot my sine wave data to. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you here. So I have a nice big graph area right here, and that's sort of in the, the visual front panel that I'll in interact with as the user of the program. If I go back to the uh, block diagram, I've seen that my the effect of my action of drawing that waveform chart has made this sort of block diagram version of it, and that's exactly what I want to wire my sine wave into. So this is it, the complete lab view program then. It'll take the sine of the loop index and pass into a waveform chart. And you can see the context sense of help just following everything I do. There's the help on the waveform chart, for instance, here. There's help on the sine wave, and if I just hold it over the while loop here, something like right there, it even tells me help on the while loop right there. But in either case, the program is done. Let me go ahead and run it and see what I get. So I'll just run the program. And here's the stop button. If I press the stop button, of course, the program stops. Now, the program is running very quickly because it's running basically at the speed of the computer because it's just a, a very tightly compiled loop here. So what I can do to slow it down a bit is I can drop back in here into my uh, function again. I right-clicked again. I can click on timing right here, and I can just choose this watch here, which says wait. Now, if I just drag that wa right in my while loop here, then you can tell from the context help up there it's asking for the milliseconds to wait, and that'll be every iteration of the loop. So if I just sort of go to this input right here and right-click on it, I can create a constant. It initially is zero right there. I'll just go ahead and change it to 500, so wait 500 milliseconds, or about a half a second for each loop iteration. If I rerun my code now, go back to the front panel and rerun it, I can see that there's my sine wave coming in again, but it's much slower now because I'm waiting one half of a second per iteration through the loop. It's certainly a parameter you could play around with a bit. Let me stop it. And I'll even make it just go a little bit faster. Maybe I'll wait um, 75 milliseconds per iteration of the loop to get a little bit more action on here. So back to the front panel, and off we go. There's my sine wave now. So here's the point of this video here. This is something, the sine wave isn't something terribly useful, but let me show you the real power of LabVIEW now and what it can do. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete my sine function. I'm going to say, okay, the sine wave is nice, but it isn't really what I want to use in the lab. I'll hit Control-B on the Windows or Command-B on Macintosh to get rid of the broken wires. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click again, and I'm going to go into this area called Measurement I.O., or Instrument I, pardon me. If I go in there, 
Uh, you'll have to look around for this, but under my instrument drivers panel right here, I see something called LabJack down in there. Now, LabJack are those red interface boxes we have throughout the lab. And if I pick on that now or pick, go into that, I see a whole bunch of things I can choose from. And in particular, I'll choose the one called E Analog In. It stands for Easy Analog In. I'm going to left click on that and just drag it right into about where my sign used to be. Now, if I look very carefully, there's a whole bunch of in, there's a whole bunch of wiring opportunities as shown by the context help up there. So what I have up there is just a bunch of stuff that I'm not even going to worry about right now. But if I look at that orange wire on the right, it says voltage. And that's the one I want to focus on right here. This wire right here. See how it's flashing there in the context help? This icon all by itself, every time it's called as it's run through the while loop, will read a voltage from the lab jack and send that voltage out on this pin. So if I just take that voltage and wire it into my waveform chart, now I have something conceivably pretty powerful. I'm now sampling voltages from the lab jack and sending them to a waveform chart. And the program is essentially done. And this is the real power of LabVIEW. I just swapped out the sine function that calculates sort of a theoretical sine wave, and now I'm talking to a real instrument which I can interface with my real electronic circuit. So if I run it now, nothing much seems to be happening. There's my old sine wave. Now, I, you can't see this in the video, but I have a variable voltage source, a potentiometer actually on my lab jack. And what I'll do is I'm just going to start turning that. So as I turn this potentiometer, that one way I'm turning it as, as I'm speaking here, turning it up and down. Now I'll do really fast in both directions. Now I'll go up and hold it. Now I'll go down and hold it. You can see I'm clearly reading a real voltage in. Furthermore, the voltage seems to be between 0 and about 5 or 4.5 volts or so. So see, I've actually now interfaced the computer with software to a real instrument in the laboratory. And this voltage could be connected to just about anything. So it's an extremely powerful process that I'm doing right here. So let me just stop that again and look back at the code now. And that's one of the real powers of what we're doing here. We have all this software installed for it, and it's all ready to go. Let me just look one more time to remind you where you'll find that lab jack stuff. If I right click on this thing and go into instrument I.O. and instrument drivers here, and then back in the lab jack, there's a whole bunch of opportunities for interfacing with lab jack. The easiest ones to use are the one called Easy Analog In for reading voltages, Easy Analog Output for outputting voltages. You can see how the context helps sort of change. And in particular, on this Easy Analog Out, Notice how the voltage now is on the left side indicating an input. So you can tell LabVIEW what voltage to send out to the lab jack, and you will see that voltage appear on the jumper block. There's some other ones which are important here, which is called Easy Digital In. These allow you to interface with the digital pins, just 0 to 5 volts, and Easy Digital Out. These four together, Easy Digital Out, Easy Digital In, Easy Analog Out, and Easy Analog In, are extremely useful. And you can do many, many things in the laboratory to interface the computer to your electronic circuit.